Hey Art Fam, it's Luis Martin, the Art Engineer. Thank you for joining me. This is a post Art Fair postcard. Uh, there's so much to talk about. I am floating on air and I wanted to share some of my experiences and I wanted to share the art or some of the art that I shared uh, during the four days, four days, it doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a lot, uh, four days that I was there with the public and um, it was just such a great time. Uh, before we go on, please uh, share, subscribe uh, so we can take this show on the road and inspire other artists to um, share their work because this is really at the heart of what I do, right? Sharing my work, inspiring you, asking you, inviting you, prompting you to share your work. A big part of this video is also an invitation and a call to action to join me for the 6M program that starts this July. Listen, I didn't just wake up one day and said, oh, I want to do this art fair and took my artwork. No, it was a process. I like a lot of us, I'm a very sensitive person and have ideas and have ways I want to do things, ways I want to share my work. And that is a process. That is a thought process that is easier done with someone who knows something, right? I consulted, I researched, I looked at things to educate myself. I even spoke to other artists. So if you are a creative person who has the call to go beyond your studio, and you want to share it with the world and you would like to monetize part of it and that's okay if you want to monetize your work that's perfectly okay it doesn't make you less of an artist it doesn't make you less of a humble person that whole starving artist thing is a myth if that rubs you the wrong way this might not be a channel for you i am all about taking what we do and thriving from there coming from a place of power so take a seat get some coffee collage if you want as we speak um, because I have some really exciting things to share about how I took my idea to create this into this. Are you ready? So the other art fair is an organization that does different cities. They go around the country, they go to Australia, they, I think they're from Australia, and they go to London and they have booths for artists. Now, the difference between this and an art show is that this is yours. You man it or you operate it, you pay for it. It is like a trade show, right? Um, people who attend have to pay to get in. They take a percentage. I mean, this is a business interaction. This is not a submit your work and we'll show your work after a fee. No, this is like a business contract. So it is a beautiful thing because you get to share your work within the context of other artists, within the context of an audience, and within a context of people who want to go see your work to buy art, right? So people who are collectors, people who are interior designers, people who are just curious, people artists who want to be inspired. Uh, so it's a really great thing to, to educate yourself about. It is not the way you think it is ever, like everything, right? Um, so you look at it and you're like, oh, how fun, let me participate. Like everything, it goes a little deeper than face value. So if you're interested, go to their website, get some information, and um, and see if this is for you. The fair took place at the Brooklyn Navy Yard. Now these events usually take place in very remote places right outside uh, the major cities because they need the big spaces to create these environments, right? So this was in the Navy Yard and it was really hectic to get to, but you know what? That did not deter people, not even the rain. It was crowded, it was thriving, it was bustling, it was beautiful. So I was really excited that um, that was one of the perks, right? I didn't have to worry about sending invitations. They have their own mailing list and they brought the people through. So that was really exciting. Um, my booth was an eight by four. And to me, it was a perfect opportunity to present a project that I would be happy with, right? So if I didn't make any sales, I wanted to have a beautiful environment where I can take pictures and uh, prove to myself and share with the world that look, I can put on a show. Let's take it on the road, right? Uh, my booth was number 34, so I just called it booth 34. And it was inspired by, what else? 
a record shop, right? You see this thing over here, my, my record player? Some of you might know this. Um, my grandmother, who was a crazy wild lady, uh, worked for Capitol Records, uh, pressing vinyls, and the rejects she would keep and use them to decorate the house. So she would put them all over the house. Uh, so my booth was inspired by that moment of, of having LPs and, and, and records as art. And again, I am Mexican, so I use a lot of my imagery. I source them from history books and I give them my twists and I tell my stories through them right? Uh, as an artist, that's really important for me to show up in that way. It doesn't mean that you have to do anything, right? Just because I'm Mexican doesn't mean I have to do this, but this is the way I choose to show up because I want to inspire other people of color, other Mexicans to see uh, positive imagery of themselves in our history that has for all intents and purposes been erased right uh we know that california used to be mexico uh but what was there before what were, who were the people what were the colors what were the stories and one thing that i like to imagine while i was making these uh 16 by 16 it's a little bigger than the lps but i was just imagining um if these people survived and they made music, what would that sound like? And could this be the cover for that, right? So this booth was the perfect opportunity for my imagination to go wild, right? I was the limit. I could just do whatever I wanted. Um, along with the LPs, I had prints, I had original collages, I had framed work. And to top it off, I took my record player with a collection of vinyls of Latinx music that inspired a lot of the work on view. And, 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 I put together a playlist of some of these songs. So there's a link in the description uh, where you can listen to these uh, songs and get inspired. It was so beautiful. I, I just, I can't get over it to invite people into the space and for them to take the time to not only look at my art, but to sit, listen to my records and kind of have what I called a analog immersive experience, right? And talking about analog, I also had a manifesto, which I wrote a few weeks ago, not specifically for this, but it was the perfect timing, really, right? When you get these inspirations, you guys, like something like, oh, I think I should do this. It doesn't always have to make sense, right? So something told me, oh, you should write this. And I'm like, okay, I wrote it. And it just happened to be that a few weeks later, I got accepted into this fair, and it was the perfect place to present that, right? It was the perfect platform. Uh, and along with, um, this manifesto, the whole point of it was the importance of making things with your hand in an AI world, right? So I took the manifesto and in the back of the manifesto was this. I invited some of our community, some of my community, the art fam to share some of their collages. And it was really important because like I said, this is a very expensive endeavor, right? When we look at artists, we think, oh, they're they should do their work and, and enjoy it. That's not really sustainable, right? If you're an artist, you know this. You have to pay for your paper, your glue. If you're a painter, you have to pay for your brushes, your canvases. If you're a dentist, you have to pay for your rent, your office, your tools. There is no difference. It's a vocation, right? So with my manifesto, I invited people to join for a fee. I asked if they wanted to be part of it, they can give me $50 and I will add them to this and a picture and their hashtag, their handle, and to share their work with the people who are coming through the, through the fair. And it happened and I was able to print these beautiful newsprints. And let me tell you, it looks like newsprint and it's ephemeral, meaning it won't last forever, but that was expensive. It was $500 to print a um, thousand, right? $500, like, oh. We don't really talk about money in the art world and it's important to talk about it because it's real uh, So let's let's flip the page. Let's talk a little bit about business um, Like I said 
If you want to take your art practice to the next level, the 6M program is a fantastic place to start because I'm there with you and I pride myself in my gift to see talent and to encourage talent, right? I am not going to sugarcoat it, but I'm also not going to push you beyond your prefaces. I'm not going to push you down a cliff. Um, and there is just so much power when we switch our way of thinking and when we framework our practice differently. So like anything, if you are going to be a rebel, if you are going to do things differently, it's not going to be easy. I will tell you right now, nothing of this has been easy. I've been having fun. I have made the choice that no matter what I do in art, in my life, I will be having fun, right? So if I'm working my butt off, making these collages, making these events happen, raising money to actually pay for it, I'm going to have fun doing it, right? Not that it's not work, but it's going to be fun work. So with this 6M program, it's important to kind of be open and know that you want it and be okay with wanting that. Well, let me know and I will put you in the right path. Now, I won't go into the boring details of the math that went into the booth and all of the other expenses like taxis and the U-Haul to get it there and the actual, you know, prices of having to buy frames. It, it's all there, right? It, like, it, it's an actual cost. And uh, again, I think a lot of people from the outside take it for granted and expect you to just be satisfied with the pleasure of making art. Um, that is a thing. Yes, we can find that pleasure and enjoy it, but we still got to pay rent and we still got to pay for the lights and we still got to eat and I enjoy coffee and beautiful things. So I don't feel bad about any of that. I hope you don't either. So be okay with showing people how to support you, right? Kind of like I did with the newsprint uh, manifesto, um, how I'm doing the 6M program. These are ways that you can support me and I can support you, right? It's an ecosystem. It's a beautiful thing once you open yourself up to the things that you want in your life. Uh, having said that, the booth was not cheap and one way that I like to think about it is, okay, if I do not sell one single thing, let me put on a show that I'm happy with, that I can take pictures of, that I can share with people, and then do something from that, right? Because listen, I did this show five years ago, five years ago, the other art for here in Brooklyn, five years ago, before the pandemic. Um, and nobody bought one single thing. It was an investment. I took pictures. It was an investment. But of course, I was devastated, right? Like, not one single thing. I was sh showing collages framed. But the world has changed. Post-pandemic, the world has changed. People relate to artists completely different. Millennials, unlike the previous generations, support artists. They buy art. They have a different relationship to things. Um... It was also post Black Lives Matter. Now, I'm not black, but I'm a person of color. And when I was presenting at this fair, I was one of two people of color in the whole fair. That's different now. Now, this time there were plenty of uh, people. Well, there were a lot of black people. I was the only Mexican, but still there was, it was, it has changed. So sometimes it really isn't that you are doing something incorrect it's just that the world's not ready for you right this time around it was it was a completely different experience i was able to sell work and for people like us if you're watching this i know you're the same way if you're sensitive and if things have to feel right right like i can make money i can quit this video right now and go get a job at starbucks at a museum at as a postman but that doesn't feel right to me. So I can't do that. And I, and I probably wouldn't be able to do it. Believe me, if I could, I would, but I can't. This is all I can do, right? And this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So if that is important to you, 
you kind of have to get your head straight and you have to be okay with things and you have to be okay with with wanting things and accepting things and getting those roadblocks out of your heart out of your soul out of your mind about money about people about sharing your work about the worthiness of what you create now let me tell you so i did all my work right i, I got myself aligned i'm like okay this is going to be fun i'm going to make it fun i'm going to be open to the experience and the right people will come and guess what the right people came like i like so two examples of, of the perfect people coming my collage prints were inspired by LP Records, who would be a perfect art buyer, a retired DJ, <laughs> a retired DJ passed by the booth and was like, oh, this is amazing, and bought four on the spot. He wanted to buy the whole wall, but his wife was like, mm, let's start with four. <laughs> but still, he bought four. Who, the perfect person, right? And then the next day, who else would be the perfect person to buy my work? A Mexican father who just moved here from Mexico to become an engineer, brought his whole family. He has his little kid and he's like, look, that's El Misterio, a wrestler. And he's like, I'll take it. Oh, and I'll take the one next to it too, because he wanted to share our culture with his kid. Yes, yes, that's exactly why I'm there right and let me tell you it wasn't all business right so there were other people who came who were artists who were curious about joining the fair and i was super frank with them as well and there were some people who were just there to to have a good time on a friday night have a drink which is perfectly ac acceptable too um but i met people this one woman sticks out who was with her brother and her brother's like my brother just reminded me that when I was 16, I entered an art contest with a collage and won first place and went to Paris. And I never collaged after that. <laughs> I was like, wow, what did I do? I gave her a collage kit as a gift, right? Here, get back to it. We want your work. Um, and that reminded me because when I was a kid, when I was uh, 16, I won an art contest with a collage. And the first prize was to come to New York with my parents they gave me five thousand dollars and i was on the today show like wow right so the moment that happened i was like the moment i got on the plane i was like okay this is where i need to be as an adult and that's how that happened and that's how i'm here so these opportunities are not only about making uh, a buck because we got to make that money i'm not i'm not sure i'm coding that but it's also about making these connections and these connections don't always mean revenue Sometimes they mean inspiration, sometimes they mean connection, sometimes they mean reflection, but it's all part of the same thing, right? I can't say one is more important than the other because if I don't make the money, I can't make this video, right? So it's this beautiful flow of energy, right? So it was a beautiful thing. And like I said, this time around, I was a complete different artist. I, I also did not feel alone, right? I felt like, okay, if I don't sell a thing, unlike years previous where I was, for the most part, sharing my work, this time I come with a community, I come with you, right? I have the artists that participated in the manifesto, but I also have my YouTube family that leaves comments, that watches my videos, and uh, I wasn't alone. So thank you for that. I really mean that. Thank you for that. Uh, it made all the difference. So, I mean, it was a really, really beautiful show. Um, and it does feel like a success and I'm very happy of it. But also I think it's a really good moment to, to say that winning doesn't always feel like you think it's gonna feel, right? Like. I'm still here. I feel like I won. Not too much has changed. Um, and then there's always that moment of like um, sadness, like, oh, it's over. What a beautiful moment that where like tons of people were seeing my work and commenting and buying it. And, and now I'm here in the studio alone, but I got you. So that's okay. One more note I will say, and which circles back to the importance of the 6M program is that for the past five years or for the past few years I've been here making art with you and with the collage dream family and we are super supportive and super encouraging right 
I was in the outside world. And luckily, I had these two amazing people next to me, and it was really fun. But as I walked around, I realized, oh, we're in the context of the art world. It's different, right? There were other collage artists. Some of them were like, hey, collage, you know, bro, sis, buddy. Um, and others were like, you made collages. And <laughs> so you, and it, it, and it happens, you know, for all intent and purposes, we were working. We weren't there to have a, a hangout. We weren't there to, to make friends, as, as they say. People were there to sell, right? That was their environment. And listen, some people are just different and that's okay. That only makes you even more special if you are welcoming and want to connect with people on a real level, right? So that, that's, that's where I am. So if, you, if that rings uh, truth to you, then more reason to join us in the 6M program if you wanna go. Um, so this is a really brief postcard. I just wanted to debrief, but I also wanted to share um, three of the pieces that got a lot of attention and sold in the show uh, and, and just to give you a little background about it. So let's start with this one. This is Gazing for Home and it was a collage and I sold uh, one of five limited edition prints. This was one of, of the 16 by 16 square ones and it's inspired by a pink planet. So I've always felt like an outsider and in one of these moments and, and again I'm Things don't, feelings aren't linear, right? Sometimes you'll feel really good, sometimes you won't, sometimes you will, sometimes you won't. And it's it's not like, okay, I'm cured. No, there's work to be done if you feel this way. You'll always feel a little bit, uh, but you can mitigate that, right? And one of my moments of feeling like an outsider, I, I was informed by like, I don't know, a meme, a Google, I don't know, but I found out that there was a pink planet. And that gave me pause and that gave me hope and that gave me peace because I love pink and I thought, I think I'd be home in that planet, right? Like maybe that's where I belong. Maybe I was born on the wrong planet. I wasn't. But the idea of like, this isn't all there is. You may feel like an outsider now, here, but the world is vast and the universe is endless. So let's not give up, right? So that's what this one's about. Uh, and I love it and it's beautiful and that pink is just like, ah. Uh, so I love this one. Um, the next one, uh, and this one got a lot of attention and I think it struck a, a chord with a lot of people, but it also scared people. And one of my filters when I make art is I show my work to Elvis, my husband, and I ask him, is this scary or is it not? And if he says it's scary, I know I'm on to a good place because I know it's authentic to me, right? And this is a really good example of that. This one's called Come From Love. And it's about being the ugly duckling. It's about being the black sheep of the family, right? Uh, I was hatched out of an egg, so I always felt like, you know what? I don't care if I'm the ugly duckling, if I'm the black sheep of the family. I've been doing my thing all of my life, but I do recognize that I march to my own drum and that looks different. So this image is of putting all that forward and offering it no matter what, no matter who takes it, because it's it's what I have to offer and I'm offering it with love, period. Want it? Take it, it's yours. You don't want it? Ciao. There's another one next to me, right? So that's what this is about. And I saw a lot of people who I felt were kind of like, um, who can relate to it, right? But but they're with other people and they're like, oh, I don't know if I can like own up to like really uh, ha seeing that reflection in me with these people around me. Um, and I must say, as, as a sensitive person, I'll call it, uh, in this video, it was really beautiful to see so many people with their energies and their auras and, and just the right people come through, right? If you put that energy, the right people come through. I didn't have any negative experiences with people being nasty or, or, or just snoop, being ugly. No, it was just a really beautiful experience. Um, so that was nice. Uh, the last one I wanted to show um, was this one, the value of contrast. Now I use this one for the cover of the manifesto. I use this for some of the PR, some of the posts that I did about the other art fair. And I love this one so much because there's pink. <laughs> I love this one so much because 
This one is literally about everything that the 6M program is about, about what I find collage is about, and it's about contrast, right? What makes a good image? Contrast. You know, if you put pink next to black or, or white next to black, there's this contrast that draws your eye immediately, right? Moreover, contrast in life makes us feel uncomfortable. And it's kind of a reminder to push, to grow. Oh, this feels uncomfortable? Well, let me shift to here. Maybe this feels, oh, this feels ugly too. Let me shift forward. Let me shift to the right, to the left. We have to constantly be growing and shifting. And, and this is what this collage is about. If you see, uh, there's these beautiful roots coming out from, from the figure's head, and it's this beautiful bloom, and that only happens when you allow yourself to grow and to shift. Right. So that is what this one's about. And I love that it's repeated to remind you that everything is a stage. Everything is a season. If it's terrifying right now, wherever you are, it's a season. Keep moving. Keep going. Right. What's that famous saying? If you're going through, sh keep moving. Don't stay there. Right. So this is a beautiful reminder of that. Um, and that's it. I have a quick walkthrough video that I want to share with you of uh, the fair, just this tiny bit because it was huge. There were over 60 uh, participating artists, uh, but I did a quick walkthrough and um, and check it out. And I also do I also did a live. I wanted to do a fast one, but there were so many people there that I didn't want to um, alienate them by being on my phone, uh, which was a thing uh, at the fair. You know, people process with their phones. But, uh, but this is it. So I had an amazing time at this fair and a lot of it is due to the fact that I really felt supported. I really did. From my husband to my friends, to my art fam, to my YouTube. Uh, and that makes a difference. So wherever you are, know that we are here for you. I support you and your community does too. So feel free to dream big and go for it and grow. All right, so hit me up if you're interested in the 6M program. It starts very soon. And invest in yourself because there's nothing more expensive than ignorance and dreams that are not fed. All right, check this out. This is The Other Art Fair. Cheers.
Kathy, we're live. All right. Hello, hello. Okay, we're at the other art fair. This is the booth. This is the wall. Surprise. So it's inspired by a record shop. These are collage prints that I've done that are supposed to look. Hey, Matt, get over here. And you're supposed to be at a record shop like this man over here. Look at him. Hey, Kathy. Hey, Joanne. So I brought, I couldn't leave it behind work. Thank you. I brought the boombox, so you're invited to come. It's Chunky Baker. Uh, I have the earphones. And Marie, there's Marie. Marie, do you recognize this person? She's right there, the impetus of all this. So come get your collages. Um, all right, let me flip this over. All right, so it's, it's huge. Hey, Elvis, uh, it's really huge. Check this out. Look at this amazing stuff behind me, everywhere. There are 66 artists here, and there is so much to look at. But you want to look at something? Look at this. All right, I'm gonna turn around. People are walking away with these. Do we recognize anybody here? Tell your friends. Join the revolution. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, I am gonna pop out and uh, go greet people and possibly get a tattoo. Uh, but if that doesn't work, I am here through the 21st, through Sunday. So come join us here at the other art fair. Mes amis, thank you, thank you for your well wishes. Ciao.